Welcome to the crash course on using the new fat arrow functions in JavaScript, also known as simply arrow functions. They are introduced in ECMA script edition 6 to provide a new approach to writing anonymous functions. They are anonymous functions. Anonymous functions are functions that have no name like normal functions do. We see anonymous functions used as parameters in methods that expect executable code as an argument. Anonymous functions are used in object-oriented programming or they are sometimes supplied as the value of a named variable. Basically, anonymous functions are not named. So we're going to compare traditional anonymous function syntax with arrow function syntax side by side using several simple examples in order to demonstrate where, when, and how to use the new arrow functions where you normally use anonymous functions. Now, arrow functions have two major advantages over traditional anonymous functions. A they reduce the amount of code you need to write. So that advantage by itself makes them worth investigating. And B, in object-oriented programming, the this keyword, T-H-I-S keyword, always refers to the object no matter how many anonymous functions are nested in the class. We will demonstrate these concepts through code right now, starting with the most basic. We'll begin with the most basic example with a variable named x and we're going to make that equal to an anonymous function. And we're going to make this function take in one argument when it's called. We'll just name that argument a. Then we'll simply return a to the calling code. Now if you were to run this you would see nothing because the function is not called. So to call that function all we have to do is call upon x like that. And then we supply the one argument remember the argument is going to be named a when it runs through the function. So the argument will just make it any value we want. It could be 5, it could be a word like hello, it could be an object, whatever you want. I'll just make it a number or I'll just, here let me make it a word or a string. Now all I have to do is alert that or output that somehow and I'll just use an alert just to test it to see what it outputs. Run in the browser and I get the alert hi. So you can see that we have an anonymous function that's in the variable x and then we're calling x to run here and we're passing the argument of the string hi and it's picked up that arguments picked up as a in the function. So that's a traditional anonymous function syntax. Now we'll compare it to anonymous arrow function syntax so you can see how much it reduces the code. So let's go ahead and put this all on one line the function itself and let's copy that line and I'm going to go ahead and change that to fat arrow syntax so in this specific case since we're only passing one argument through the function we can remove all of this we can remove all of this and we don't need the return statement either and we put equal sign and directly next to that we put the right facing arrow remove this curly brace and one of these semicolons so you can see between this and this, the code is greatly reduced, but it still functions exactly the same. So I'll comment out the first one, and we'll see if we get the same result. Run, favorite browser, alert, hi. So it works exactly the same. And you can see the amount of code reduction you have. It's about half the code. And that's because you don't have to write the function statement. You don't have to write the return statement because A, is automatically returned. This A here is automatically returned. And this A is your parameter, the argument going into the function. Now let's say you have an anonymous function that doesn't take in any parameters. No arguments are being passed through. That means all you have to do is remove the A here and put opening closing parentheses and then for the return portion you can put that in a block statement and then do whatever you want. Here's where you put your executable code and we can just alert. So now when we call x to run, we're not passing any parameters through it, but the function x will still process and any executable code that we put between the curly brackets will run. Now all we have to do is call x just like that and it's going to process without taking in any parameters or passing arguments through it. Launching Chrome. See, we get the alert executable code. 
you'll have to test in Chrome or Firefox or some other browser that supports the Fat Arrow syntax because it's not standardized yet so it might not work in Internet Explorer, Safari or maybe some other older browsers. So you just have to wait for it to standardize before you can apply it to all of your projects that are running live. So really this is the most basic example. When we were taking in an argument before that would be one step up. So now we're back at the code where we're taking in an argument. Now we want to see if we can take in multiple parameters into the function as arguments. So in order to do that, all we have to do is send the new arguments in. So I'll just send three numbers. I'll send a 2, a 5, and a 1. There's three arguments being passed into the function. So we have to scoop those up somehow. So we're going to open close parentheses. That way we can scoop up arguments. And we'll just name them A, B, and C separated by commas. And then on the return side, the return data will just A plus B plus C. So we should get a 2 plus 5 plus 1 is 8. So we should get an 8 as an alert. Run in one of the browsers where arrow syntax works. And we get an 8. So that successfully takes in multiple parameters. Or passes multiple parameters that can be taken in as arguments through the function. And if I was to write this in traditional syntax for an anonymous function, it would be that long. So you have this much syntax as opposed to this much syntax to do the same exact thing. So you can see that's quite a nice reduction. It might not look as intuitive, and at first it might be a little bit confusing. It might take your eyes a little while to get used to this combination of characters. And realize that that's an arrow function because it looks a lot just like a normal operator but in fact it's the syntax for an arrow function all right now we're going to set up an example that might be something that you're more familiar with set time out or set interval they both have a parameter that expects executable code so that means you have to put code that's going to run as the first parameter to set timeout or set interval. So in that case you use an anonymous function. You can see this anonymous function is set up to just simply alert two seconds past after two seconds go by in the script. So this is traditional anonymous function syntax that you see every day. Let's save our file, run in Chrome, and after two seconds passed we get the alert. Now let's see that same exact anonymous function using arrow syntax. You can see we have a little reduction in code which is nice and we'll still get the same functionality. Let's go ahead and comment that first one out. And we'll run in our favorite browser and after two seconds pass we get the ex executable code. This can also be put into curly brackets or if you want to have more than one expression you can put semicolon there you can put multiple expressions in there so let's run yep so you can put curly brackets around that or not now there's a lot of other methods in JavaScript such as the add event listener method and a whole bunch of array methods that expect executable code to be supplied as one of their parameters of the of that method that's why knowing how to use anonymous functions is important and now knowing arrow syntax in the future is going to be equally important now we're going to quickly take a look at how it's applied to object oriented programming and class object creation so here i'm creating a class named car and it has a property of speed which I set equal to zero by default this dot speed is a property now this is using traditional anonymous function syntax now what we had to do in the past is set a variable either named self or that usually this variable is named self or that and it's equal to this now we had to do that in the past because it wouldn't refer to this object once it's inside of another function. So once you wrap it in a function, basically this code down here would not be able to reference this.speed. We have to reference self.speed. 
So it was kind of an annoying workaround that developers have been doing in, for years in JavaScript. You have to make a new variable called self, make that equal to this, and blah, blah, blah. So what happens with new arrow function syntax is it cures that problem. First, let's go ahead and run this code in the browser. And you can see the speed is incrementing. The car's speed is just keeps incrementing. It's just a basic example that we wrote. Okay, now I'm going to replace this code for the new fat arrow syntax for the anonymous function. So you can see it reduces the code a good deal because we don't have to create a variable to reference this inside of the set, set interval method. We can just use this because there's no function statement there that's going to overwrite this inside of the function where it's running. So every time a function is called in JavaScript, inside of that function, this refers to that function. That's why traditionally this was always not available inside of functions inside of your class. So our car class can now have functions inside of it that are anonymous that we can still reference this in no problem. We don't have to swap this for a new variable called self or that or none of that silliness. So let's see if this runs the same run in Chrome. Beautiful. So that syntax to me makes a lot more sense. Okay, so that about wraps up the crash course. So we demonstrated how to use fat arrow syntax inside of named variables for anonymous functions in named variables. We showed how to use fat arrow syntax as anonymous functions in method parameters like set interval, add event listener, all those different kind of methods that take in functions as a parameter you can use these anonymous functions with the fat arrow syntax. And we also demonstrated how to set it up in your classes, make in your object-oriented programming. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this crash course into fat arrow functions in JavaScript. And watch out, because they'll be coming to a script near you very soon.